welcome aboard Flight 2280. Today, we will be flying around the world in 25 minutes. On staff, we have five tour guides who will be introducing us briefly to the different continents and cultures worldwide. Please fasten your seatbelts and stow away all carry-on items under your seats as we watch this brief safety video. <laughs> There are so many places to go in this world. And so many airlines that can take you. No, we thank you. For making the journey with us. Thank you. We're glad you're here. And now we'd like for you to pay attention to the following safety video. First, please fasten your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt, insert the metal fitting into the button, and pull on the loose end of the strap to tighten. And open the step on the button. We recommend you keep your seatbelt fastened at all times. As turbulence can occur unexpectedly. As we prepare for takeoff, please be sure your seat back and tray table are up. And carry on baggage is under a seat. And at this time, all electronic devices are on. You will find our electronic device policy in the back of the American Way magazine. Smoking is not allowed at any time. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying smoke detectors in the laboratory may result in a fine. U.S. law requires passengers to comply with all signs and turn over instructions about seatbelts and smoking. So that you may follow along, we have provided a safety instruction card in your seat pocket. All exits on this airplane are clearly marked. Please refer to the safety instruction card if you locate your nearest exit. Keep in mind that most of the exit may be behind you. On this airplane, there's an additional wrap located in a marked storage compartment in the business class cabin. Each cabin exit door and some exit windows are equipped with an evacuation slide. Some slides, except those over the windows, may also be used as wraps. This aircraft has an escape path lighted in the eye. Red light or an exit sign will indicate you have reached an exit. In an emergency evacuation, we all turn our bags behind and please proceed to the nearest exit. If the aircraft has a loose pressure, the panel above your seat containing oxygen masks will open automatically. While remaining seated with your seatbelt fastened, quickly reach for the nearest mask and pull down firmly to start the flow of oxygen. Put the yellow cup over your nose and mouth. Lift the elastic band over your head and tighten by pulling the strap on either side. Breathe normally. Even though oxygen is flowing, the plastic bag is not deployed. Always put your own mask on first and then help others near you. Your seat cushion may be used as a flotation device. Remove the lower cushion and put your arms through the strap found on the opposite side. A life vest is located under the seat between seats or in a compartment between the seats in front of you. The safety instruction card shows the exact location. To use the vest, open the cover by pulling the red tab or compartment handle to break the seal. Remove the vest from the package like this. Put the vest on over your head, wrap the strap around your waist, and attach the buckle. Pull the loose end of the strap to tighten. Once outside, pull down on the red tab to inflate the vest. Or blow into the red tube on the right side of the vest. There's also a light that will illuminate upon contact with water. Now we're going to take the test inside the airplane. The crew will now be coming through to do a final cabin check. But we'll be back after takeoff with more information about your flight. Thank you for your attention and for choosing American Airlines. Thank you for flying American. We're glad to be here. Glad you're here. Our first stop on our flight today is ICM Artico. Hey guys, welcome. I want to tell you a little bit about the coldest continent, Antarctica. The population is, um, but not many people like to live here because it's so cold, but um, it's mainly the scientists and researchers, and the population has grown since 1997 from 1,200 to 4,000, which is obviously still the lowest population for a continent. And it is also the only continent with no permanent human inhabitants. Geography. It's mostly made of just ice sheets, glaciers, and mountains. It has extremely hostile weather, and it's mainly in many blizzards. Um, one research station is, on average, negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, and at its hottest, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. It is considered a desert because it is so dry as well. Living conditions. Um, you have to wear specially designed clothing and fabrics. Um, for long-term people that live here, 
that like the researchers, you have to live in a base and it looks like that. And um, but if you there on short term, you can live in the dome tents, which isn't very comfortable or warm. Um, recreational activities include photography, badminton, football, and skiing. And for food, it's just similar to like what you eat at home, um, except it's frozen and you have to like defrost it. Um, there's obviously a lack of fresh fruit and vegetables since you can't grow anything there. So you have to take lots of vitamins for your nutrition. Um, there's also, you can eat dried fruits and trail mixes that will hold out. Um, for wildlife, it, there's not as wide of a variety because it's so cold and all of the animals have to be tolerant. So it's mostly just, um, for the birds, it's mostly just penguins and albatross. And then there's various types of whales and seals that are everywhere. And there's lots of fish and krill for the whales to eat. Um, only two plants can actually grow there, and it's called the Antarctic hair grass and Antarctic pearl board. Now before we freeze, let's lock on some sunscreen and warm up in Australia with two. Hi guys, welcome to Australia. Uh, Australia's greatest asset is the many beautiful landmarks that they have, including the heart ring, which is a heart-shaped composition of coral, and it provides for some of the greatest underwater viewing of the Great Barrier in the whole world. Um, the Sydney Opera House, which was designed by the Danish architect John Hudson and was opened on October 20th of 1973, um, since then it's been one of the busiest performing arts centers in the world and has over 1,500 It's bursting with wildlife, including rare birds, wallabies, uh, koalas, echidnas, and of course kangaroos. Um, and lastly, there's Port Arthur, which is now an open air museum, but it used to be a convict settlement. And it's home of the Port Arthur Massacre, where 35 people were killed and 23 people were wounded back in 1996. Um, Martin Bryant, the 28 year old killer, still resides and is imprisoned in prison. Um, the food and culture of Australia is very interesting also. Uh, a very popular dish is um, grilled kangaroo right there. Most people eat it because it's never soggy and um, it goes really well with pineapple. Uh, Lamington is an Australian dessert that consists of square sponge cake coated in traditional chocolate sauce and then it's covered in a desiccated. Uh, it can either be served with cream or strawberry, raspberry, or even lemon jam. And the last one is uh, burgers with beetroot on the top, which is also very popular in Australia. Um, lastly, the population is 2.9 per people per square kilometer, and uh, most people reside in the southeast and east rather than the southwest in Australia. Moving on, let's head north to Asia with more. Hello everyone and welcome to Asia. Asia is the world's largest continent as well as the most populous. It covers 8.7% of the world's surface area as well as 30% of the land area. There are close to 4.3 billion people in Asia which is over half of the world's population. There are 49 countries on the continent of Asia um, and China holds 1.3 billion. India is second behind that at 1.2 billion people. There are many languages throughout Asia, um, and many of the countries have up to 800 languages. There's India with 800 languages, um, Indonesia has 600 different languages, and the Philippines have 100. There are many types of climates uh, throughout Asia in which some can get, reach low temperatures, like in Siberia. Um, and then there's um, hot and desert-like um, conditions in Pakistan. Places like Israel have reached 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Chinese script is the oldest and continuously um, used writing system in the world. And for food and culture, uh, many of the world's religions uh, originated in Asia. 
Some of the most common religions are Buddhism, Judaism, uh, Taoism, and Hinduism. The cuisine in Asia um, is broken down by region, which includes East Asia. Um, this is where you get your Chinese and Japanese food. There's also Central Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Western Asia. The main ingredient in Asian food is rice, and China um, has the world's largest rice um, that they export. Now let's head over to Europe and visit some of the most well-known landmarks in the world. Europe is famous for its culture, castles, col coliseums, and cave finds. Oh my! Europe is made up of 48 countries, and its population is approximately 742.5 million. It's the second smallest continent next to Oceania, and it's a peninsula of peninsulas because it's a peninsula on the supercontinent of Eurasia, which is a really cute mashup of Europe and Asia. Europe includes a lot of the countries that we know and love, but it also includes Iceland. I don't think a lot of you knew that. Uh, it's bordered by the Atlantic to the north and the west, and the Mediterranean, Black, and Caspian Seas to the south. It can be divided into four major regions, the central uplands, and the North European Plain, the Western Uplands, and the Alpine Mountains. Imagine if the states were broken up into separate countries. Wouldn't that be really weird? Well, not sure what to visit first? Try the gondolas in Italy, the Eiffel Tower in France, or maybe buildings and relics aren't your thing? Try ice, the land of fire and ice. Next stop is Africa, with our tour guide. I know most of you probably haven't even been to Africa. You've only seen pictures, and when you think Africa, you probably think giraffes, maybe elephants, maybe camels. Um, but actually, Africa is a lot more than that. It has very rich culture and really good fishing as well. Uh, Africa is the world's large, uh, second largest continent and one of the most densely populated continents. It uh, covers 11.7 uh, million square miles, and that's about 6% of the Earth's total surface area. With 1.1 billion people, and as of 2013, it counts for about 15% of the world's population. Uh, the continent is uh, surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea to the north, both the Suez Canal and the Red Sea along the Sinai Peninsula to the northeast, the Indian Ocean to the southeast, the Atlantic Ocean to the west. The continent includes Madagascar and various other islands off the coast. You probably just think um, Africa is probably just Madagascar and uh, Africa the main landmass. But there's a whole bunch of different islands off of South Africa and upon Northeast Africa. Uh, basically, it has 54 fully recognized sovereign states, uh, nine territories, and two um, de facto independent states, which are basically the uh, rebellious kind. They don't have any central government or any form, which are they're mostly run by uh, African gangs and uh, drug lords. Um, the culture in Africa, um, basically, most African people, uh, excluding the South Africa, that's more westernized. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's more uh, small religiously um, based tribes that have uh, little or no contact with westernized civilization. Um, it has a rich uh, tradition in arts and crafts as well. Uh, um, African arts uh, find expression in a variety of wood carvings, brass, leather artworks, and uh, including like sculptures, paintings, pottery, ceremonial, and religious headgear. Um, there's an art to it, it's called Malawena Karenga, which states that African art, the object was not as important as the soul force behind the object, which basically means it has a meaning behind it. Everything that they do that they make has a meaning behind it. And the art must be revolutionary, and being revolutionary, it must be collective, committing, and functional. Now this piece right here, my dad got in South Africa, it's made by a uh, certain, uh, I think it was a tribe that he, uh, they were doing some stuff in South Africa. And basically they'd make these things for you out of tiger shark teeth and a certain kind of wood. And they put that together for you. It's really cool. Um, it's basically, it's representing a weapon, like a uh, head of a weapon, basically what it is. Um, and uh, that art also trends over to fishing, which is my favorite subject. Um, that art, the fishing there is one of the major, major um, income for that country is because they're very low income. So basically any internal fishing um, in like the near Mount Kilimanjaro up to Egypt into the Mediterranean, that really helps out a lot. And that 
really goes back to their to their roots when African civilization first um, emerged. And you know, a lot of people travel there. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm a commercial fisherman who went uh, charters. Um, come on. And I'm going to South Africa, and uh, that's where I fish. I like um, a lot of uh, fish species there: yellowtail, snapper. Um, you have uh, marlin, especially marlin's a big game fish there too. Kingfish. Um, mainly go for African pompano. That's the most abundant, most abundant fish there. And you know, if if you ever want to take a trip there, I I highly recommend it. Um, you know, I like it. It's cool. It's a lot of fish. Heading back towards home. Let's make a quick stop for our neighbor. Thank you for joining us on this 